Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra Podcast, a 10-minute show for the gardener on the go. I'm your host, Joy Barrett, and alongside is my wife and co-host, Holly Barrett. This show is dedicated to the home gardener who wants to grow more food or never has and wants to learn. This program is brought to you by DollarSeed.com, WillowSpringSoap.com, ManureTea.com, and SquirmAndWormFarms.com. It's all about squash this week. Summer squash, winter squash. Now, for some of you, you may already have your allotment of squash planted in your garden. Others may be in the process of planting it, much like we are here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardens. And some of you may be still trying to figure out the best place to plant it due to the cold nature of your weather. Now, summer squash and winter squash, are they like the heat. They don't like anything cold. So anything below about 60 degrees, they don't like and can die from it. Right. So you want to make sure you're planting your squash so that you're going to have a nice soil temperature so that it will stay happy. Right. I was safe as 60 degrees and above. Right. Now let's talk about the two different types of squash here. I mentioned winter squash and summer squash. Let's talk about summer squash first. Summer squash means that it's only it's only going to keep for the summer. It's something that you want to cook and eat and whatever you're going to do with it right away. Yeah, it's a short-term storage type of vegetable. Winter squash, on the other hand, which is a uh, you know, you can store all winter long or, you know, the approximate time is six months. We've had some store 12 to 14 months. Right. Now, summer squash, the seeds are embedded in the fruit. Right. Winter squash, there is a cavity of where these the seeds are stored, like a buttercup or spaghetti or kind of like a pumpkin. Like a pumpkin, yeah. You've got a hollow cavity of where those seeds are are formed and stored. And the summer squash, like zucchini, black zucchini, Yellow zucchini, crooked neck, they're all patty in pan. patty pan. They're all engraved into the the squash itself. And the summer is more of a bush variety, and the winter squash is more of a vine variety. Right. Though winter, though, though summer squash is slightly more slightly vine, not quite bush, as some people may portray it to be. Right, and so there's advantages, obviously, to growing both because you're going to have squash you can eat right away, and squash you can keep for the winter. And well, as long you as don't have to. You don't have to keep the winter squash oh, till right, winter, right. but you it's it's designed by nature to store over long periods of time in the proper environment. Right, and zucchini is nice to make zucchini relish as opposed to making cucumber relish. It's it's a very nice, delicious thing to have on hand, especially to add quickly into egg salad or uh, tuna salad or even potato salad. Especially when you have an abundance of zucchini coming right. out of the garden and all your friends and relatives have locked their doors and pretended they're not home when you <laughs> try to bring it over to them. You can also make with summer squash or zucchini, zucchini bread. Right, you can make zucchini bread. And, and, it re and it's very similar and you can fool a lot of people because they all think it is banana bread. Right. You can even make zucchini pie. Yeah, there is a recipe online that is exactly like apple pie, but the substituting apple for the zucchini, and it's almost, you can't tell the difference. Right, so there's a lot of different options for using zucchini, and that's the nice part about it is that you can, we even made squash cookies. I don't know if you can use zucchinis, but we use patty pan patty squash. squash. So let's talk about the planting of squash. Now, we done a straight to the point very early in our video series on the proper ways to plant squash. And we'll incorporate that into the show notes in, uh, for those who want to know. But let's just talk about some of the, the uh, things you want to know about planting summer squash. You want it to be as sunny of a location as possible. And they do not like partial shade or shade at all. You want to, in the planting process, you want to incorporate a handful of Epsom salt in the base of the bottom of the root system. Now, if you've already planted your squash, don't worry. You can take a handful and sprinkle around the outer portions of the root ball. But what that Epsom salt does, it uh, balances out the calcium in the soil because sometimes we get you know, zucchini that will begin to form and it gets yellow and rotten on the end and it gets about maybe two inches long and it falls off. That's because it's a lack of calcium in the soil or it's a lack of the plant being able to pick up the calcium that may be in your soil. By the Epsom salt, putting it around or in the root system, it virtually eliminates that problem. Right. So there's a few different uh, tips or tricks that Joey had mentioned. And you also want to make sure that you're going to have enough room for your squash, or well, any of your squash, but your zucchini definitely, to bush out. Now, in the uh, video that's in the show notes that we did on our extra, you can actually trellis zucchini. 
yeah. you can actually as the zucchini grows and I speak about it in the video it forms a vine and that vine can gently be to, uh, elevated into an upward position next to a fence post or a, a bamboo stake of some sort and you can tie it and it actually kind of looks like a little palm tree by the end of the season as it grows right so that's something you can think about doing another thing you can do to help your squash is make sure it stays watered just like any vegetables obviously water is a big component but squash in order for it to grow large it does need to have a lot of moisture now you know people every year you know will grow zucchini and they'll come out with this giant you know harvest of a, a zucchini the size of a baseball bat that really serves no purpose because it's basically inedible at that size you want to harvest these zucchini when they're about six to eight inches in length and you know half inch to an inch and a half in diameter the, there's no reason to let it go any bigger than that even if you're making relish obviously the smaller the fruit the tender it is now you can allow it to get a little bit bigger if you're going to make relish because relish is you're able to uh, take those larger fruits and cut them down into a smaller you're piece. You're going to add flavor. You're going to add flavor. But the plant's thought process is if it's producing a fruit, a zucchini the size of a baseball bat, for example, it's not going to base or try to put any more fruit on. Its focus of a plant's life is to put fruit on to reproduce, to put a big seed factory into that fruit. So whenever the mother plant dies, that fruit, that zucchini, can have mature seeds that can sprout again and carry on the traits so in the fruit production the more the quicker you harvest the fruit off the plant the more fruit you're going to get off that plant based on the size of the fruit you're harvesting that's summer squash now winter squash is a little different uh animal let's so to speak here winter squash you want to leave on the vine until the first before the first frost in some cases some cases after the first frost but you don't want to harvest winter squash until it's fully mature. Something that you definitely want to keep in mind because that way it's you're going to ensure that it's fully grown or for, fully Ma matured. Keep it matured. And then also you know you're going to get a nice long harvest out of it if, if that's something you want to do. And when you do harvest it you want to keep it in a cool and dry location. Yes, uh, basement, root cellar, crawl space. You want to bring it in the house, cure it based on the type of squash certain different curing times will occur. You know, if you don't have a crawl space, root cellar, basement, what do you do? Well, you can store it. Some people store it behind their couch in the living room, uh, under their bed, in a lower cabinet, farthest away from the heat source in your kitchen. Though they won't store nearly as long as that they would if they were in a basement or root cellar, but you will get some extended life out of that particular squash. Now, winter squash is a viney squash. It can be trellised. Butternut, buttercup, uh, uh, spaghetti, all can be trellised. Now, you just want to keep in mind, you want to look at what the end result of your winter squash is. And you can trellis all winter squash, but if the, if the, squash, if the fruit is excessively large, you're going to have to net it or support it on its vine as it's crawling up a trellis. And that's good for people who have space issues. If you don't have a lot of space, to let squash vine out completely, then it won't hurt to try to trellis it. So with the squash, you know, it, it's a wonderful vegetable to grow. It's one of the uh, rewards of a long, a long growing season right. in the garden. Summer squash takes about 60 days. Winter squash can take anywhere from 90 to 115 days. So you want to keep that in mind. So what we do here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardens is right now we've started our, our zucchini or early spring, summer harvest as the season draws on with 60 days in about 60 days we'll start another set of zucchini so we can have fall zucchini as well so the plants will experience a, a disease powdery mildew at times throughout the season and there's different remedies that are effective and we'll deal with that on a future uh, episode but you want to keep in mind that that white watery that uh, white mildew on the plants is that powdery mildew that can hurt the plant's production and we'll tackle that in an upcoming episode where uh, I'm sure we will experience powdery mildew again this year in the garden. I'm Joy Baird. And I'm Holly Baird. And this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra Podcast, a 10-minute show for the gardener on the go. It's been brought to you by DollarSeed.com, WillowSpringSoap.com, ManureTea.com, and squirmandwormfarms.com. To find all those websites, you can look in the show notes below. And for more information, you can find us on our website at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.